guys, there was a, a baby wildebeest trapped on this side of the lake and it's so brave, it's swimming on its own across the lake, which is really remarkable bravery and let's see if it can make it across to the other side. Welcome to episode four guys. Exciting, exciting today. We were, we got out a little bit late this morning because uh, lots and lots of rain overnight. So we had to just wait a little bit for things to dry out and we had to fix Lucy. Uh, Lucy is good again, so ready for our game drive. Let me not bump into these two Impala that's uh, on the road. They'll be sorting out the mating rights that they are fighting about um, but the exciting news that we are really lucky that the migration has moved back towards the Ndutu woodland we are camping right on the edge of uh, Lake Ndutu on the Serengeti side and from camp we saw them approaching the lake and these guys whenever they see water for some reason they always feel like crossing the water it's in their genes, that's why when they get to rivers they cross, which is partly why they cross the Mara River, the Grumeti River, and then sometimes they cross the lakes at Hidden Valley, and it looks like if we're lucky, they'll cross Lake Ndutu today. Let's go have a look. Wow, we've had so much rain. Uh, it is the long rains, but we've had an incredible wet, short rainy season. And this is the first time in 20 years that I personally see uh, lakes Masek and Lake Ndutu connecting. Um, normally there's a road here that we call the causeway, which is uh, normally dry. So I've just engaged four wheel drive and let's hope we can cross. Really wet. But I'm sure with the Land Cruiser will be okay. Uh, we have a raised air intake, so we don't have to worry about water coming into the engine. So, yeah. Oops, a daisy. stay on the rocks that's been packed at the bottom luckily it's hard at the bottom everything good so far so good Serengeti show camp life and uh, today is classroom day. Thank you Mr. Zebedeo Mbando for teaching us some Swahili lessons. You're welcome. You know it's great to, if, whenever you are in a foreign country, to make an effort to learn the language of Tanzania. Absolutely right. And the language is? Swahili. Oh, Kiswahili. Kiswahili, yeah. Excellent, so we're going to cover some of the animals that we have seen in the last few days. Maybe you can help us with the Swahili one and we will repeat so we can get the pronunciation right. Alright, no problem. <coughs> You're welcome. We actually have five animals, five wild animals. 
that you are going to name them into Kiswahili language. Yes. And uh, I will start name each of them and then you will repeat after me. Okay. And the first one today is Simba. 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 And that is that? That is lion. 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 Simba like li from Lion King, huh? Yeah, Lion King. That's why in Tanzania we have Simba Football Club. Mm. Yeah, so many things in Tanzania cast some names from wild animals. Mm. Yeah. Simba Cement. Simba Cement. Yeah. <laughs> you see now you know. Mm. <laughs> and the next one is Nyumbu. Ah, say. Nyumbu. 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 Yeah, that one is wild beast. Ah, we see a lot of those ones. Yes, yeah. Nyumbu. Nyumbu. Excellent. Yeah. And the third one is Tembo. 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 Ah, there's a beer Tembo. called Tembo. Tembo. There is oh, a beer called Ndovu. Ndovu. Yeah, <laughs> so Tembo, this is an elephant. Mm. But in Zanzibar, those people do not prefer to call it Tembo, but they call it Ndovu. Mm. So, ah, so there are two words for elephant. Two words for elephant. So if you see, you hear someone says Ndovu and the other one is saying Tembo, these are two words for the single animal called an elephant. Sava, tembo sava. is much easier than yeah. Ndovu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tembo is much easier. We can call the beer Ndovu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth animal is Mbweha Maskio. Say yeah, that one is difficult. Mbweha maskio. Maskio means ears. Yes. So mbweha fox. Mbweha. Yeah. Mbweha, mbweha maskio. Bat eared fox. Mbweha maskia. Mbweha. Mbweha masikio. 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 That's good. Masikio. It's then, also because it has tough ears. Uh -huh. yeah. so, so this is the best All foxes fox. are called Mbweha, Mbweha into Kiswahili language. But it's called Mbweha Maskio because of the ears. Yes. So Maskio is ears. Yes. 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 Excellent. And the last one for today is Twiga. Ah. Twiga. I think I know this one. This one Who here. knows it? Me! Salim, please tell us what it's is it? It's a giraffe. Giraffe. Because Excellent. it's the national animal of Tanzania, right? You are absolutely right. So giraffe, we call it twiga. Twiga. The tallest wild animal. Twiga cement. Twiga, twiga cement. <laughs> <laughs> we have twiga cement and we have simba cement. So I don't know which one will you prefer. Uh, it depends. Twiga. Which one twiga. is stronger? <laughs> <laughs> it depends with the kind of animal that you like. I have another one. Yes. Mwalimu. Wow, that's good. Uh, Mwalimu. 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 Yeah. What that is means what is that? that means teacher. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, teacher uh, is Mwalimu mm. and our first president God late Mwalim Julius Kambaraginirere because before becoming a president he was a teacher or he was Mwalimu. Ah, yes. okay. Thank you Mwalimu. So, thank, thank you so Mwalimu. So, You're welcome. Evgenia, can you remember thank you? Asante sana. Yes! <laughs> Very good. You are a good teacher. You're welcome. Mm. And Asante. you are a good student because you can understand what I'm telling you or what I'm teaching you. <laughs> so we get some stars. Yeah, but by proving that you are understanding, maybe I will challenge you a bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe who can tell us how do we call an elephant into Swahili? Tembo. Wow, that's Ndovu. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thank yeah. you so much. Asante sana. Karibu sana.
Okay guys, we've bumped into the great wildebeest migration on the edge of Lake Ndutu and this will probably be our migration update but also a spectacular sight to witness. The nice thing about the migration is, is you can have a look at them any time of day so it's not a morning or late afternoon thing and it's incredible how the herds always seem to follow us literally a kilometer from we ride across the lake our camp and we spotted them from camp today i kind of hope that they don't cross the lake with their little ones the lake is really full of water and uh, really deep and um, there would definitely be some casualties which is never nice to see but uh, two beautiful massage giraffe walking straight through them and we're gonna just keep our distance try and not change their behavior but uh, wow, what a lucky day. Two kilometers from camp. The last time we saw them was on the Matiti Plains and towards Cusini, which is a good hour's drive from here. And, and this morning, we, all we have to do is have a cup of coffee and watch it all happening from camp. We're driving a bit closer to, uh, to bring it to you. Enjoy. things that really make the Serengeti a special place and it's the only place in the world that you can come and experience the great wildebeest migration they are within the Serengeti throughout the year and uh, we know that they cross into the Kenyans Masai Mara for a short period of time from September onwards and um, but you can come and witness the, the great migration throughout the year in the Serengeti um, that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years and uh, we follow the herds and wow every time time i see them it's just exhilar exhilarating these guys i always have an urge or it's within their genetic makeup and instinct that when they reach water that they want to cross and uh, it's something that has baffled my brains for a very long time and uh, Water seems to give them energy and they'll start vocalizing and we can hear that there's a little bit of vocalization going on and um, as the vocalization would increase uh, then we know there's an energy buildup and that's the energy and the critical mass that's required for them to take the plunge and cross the lake or the Mara River and it's fascinating. guys you can hear the vocalization has started and uh, I kind of hoped that it wouldn't but this is the energy buildup that we spoke about earlier and uh, I hope they don't cross because the lake is so full and uh, it's a very long swim for these youngsters the newborn calves that are just over a month old and what often happens is they would cross and get confused and cross back and then cross back again and uh, they just can't. The little ones don't have the stamina to cross this lake two or three times. They might uh, cross it once. And what also happens is if they cross the lake, the mother's scent gets very dull. And that's one of the ways that the calves identify who their mothers are. And that's then if they can't smell their mums for that, even if it's half an hour as they dry out, they lose their moms and it's confusion and they get isolated and uh, it's just uh, sometimes really not good for them. It's, again, it's nature and 
uh, we're just here to observe and see what happens. But uh, it's all thumbs that everyone makes it. Okay guys, we're gonna let them be and we're gonna turn around and wait for them at the causeway. Hopefully they will cross at the causeway, which would be a lot easier for them. So we're gonna wait at the causeway for them and have a look from the other side and see if they cross towards us, which would make for prettier pictures. So we're out of here. While we are waiting for the migration to approach us, we have these beautiful Maasai giraffe between us and the lake. And it's just so scenic here. You don't even have to see anything and it's just magical. It's incredible beauty. Um, the Serengeti and Ngorogoro Crater Conservation Area. giraffe are really doing well. A lot of the females are pregnant. Let's see if we can find a way down here again. Probably not here. Okay, just gonna go around. It's all the erosion caused by the water. Very dark females. You'll see the females have hair on top of their horns. That's how you can quickly see in the males. The hair is worn because they use them for necking and they determine their dominance over one another. So smooth horns on top for the bulls and hairy horns for the females. Really doing well there. Let's look at that. Yeah. Again, another gentle approach. them too much but it's another collective noun for giraffe is a journey a giraffe it always seems that they on a journey somewhere far away and uh, there's a good seven or eight of them we had a few at camp and really beautiful Really beautiful giraffe. You can see when they are walk, it's the two left legs, the two right legs that move together. So it's, uh, you should try that at home. It's not that easy. And that was just the noise of the car. We went over a bush that disturbed them there a little bit with some zebra in between. Virtual zebra. Female here that's running to the right. And the one dead ahead. You can see it's a male and he is necking with the right hand horn a little bit more than the left hand one. See, it's worn even more. So, just going around the bush. Yeah, you can see what I mean. Quite a few bulls here, so it's definitely competition here for mating rights. And uh, it's probably the reason why 
so many youngsters. People believe they mute, but they do communicate on a very low frequency communication. Beautiful female. I think she might be the one on heat because the male has been following her and he's stopping when she's stopping, so there must be definitely some hormones that's produced there. fight between two giraffe bulls are very aggressive and will sometimes last a couple of hours and it's sometimes one bull will fall over they hit each other right here on the chest and in the neck and if they get a if they get hit in the wrong place they pass out and mostly they recover again after a few minutes but quite a thing to witness. The wildebeest bring flies, so that's why I'm flapping and waving all the time. I hope we stay on the road. I don't want to get stuck here. When you cross water like this you have to always find a marker dead ahead and aim for that because a lot of guys follow the flow of the water and then end up on the wrong side. So I'm aiming for the road on the other side and that should keep us on track, I hope. Well, so good. Beautiful heron. Looks like a grey heron. And they busy hunting for frogs. They're omnivorous, meat eating, sometimes even birds. And um, they'll hang out in the flat plains feed feed in the shallow water quite a few of them here it's ideal conditions for herons black heron up and get an aerial view and see what happens with the herds. Hi there, Kids Corner guys. It's time for Kids Corner and we are so excited that the kids are joining us on Serengeti Show Live and exciting today. We bumped into a whole pile of dung beetles busy uh, getting their little balls. This is elephant dung, so there was a big elephant that deposited this uh, big pile of elephant dung and then the dung beetles are coming and they start to make a small little ball. And they start rolling it and rolling it and rolling it and the ball gets bigger and bigger and rounder and rounder until a female sees a nice big ball. She then goes and lies her eggs inside the, this big ball of dung and that's where the new little dung beetles hatch. So this is the start of family planning. Great house to live in, you know, and imagine that you had to grow up in a pile or a bowl of elephant dung. And uh, these guys are all starting 
to make little balls and then we will show you there's a little bit of fighting about balls some dung beetles steal another dung beetles ball doesn't have to work and uh, and we're gonna find one now and they start rolling it and rolling it and as the dung uh, ball picks up dirt all along the way it becomes bigger and bigger let's have a look here's a here's a guy he's uh, he's got his little ball and uh, he's out of here so he's now rolling it to get away from all the other competition and uh, this ball will get bigger and bigger and uh, walks backwards pushing it up the hill and then he gets stuck and uh, so he continues until the female will find a nice looking ball and she will lay her eggs in there guys another thing about dung beetles i would like to show you is generally they go to the highest point and then they start flying Let's do another one. That one was a bit quick. One with outer ball. Here's one. So you will see it, it will walk to the highest point. And then start flying. Okay guys, we've we're back on the Serengeti side of Lake Nduti and we crossed back. And uh, the herds are all gathering on the edge of the lake. And there are two groups that's uh, standing right at the edge of the lake. So we're going to be ready for both of them. And uh, chances are really good that there might be a lake and due to crossing. Now it's just a waiting game. Okay guys, there's one wildebeest that entered the water, it could potentially start and it really has a lot of probability of happening this lake and due to crossing and I can't believe our luck, you know, and uh, okay there, he doesn't have much support at the moment and he looks like he's heading back out but at least there are very good signs that, uh, that the crossing would happen. We hope everyone would be safe and make it across. It looks like they're coming to the kind of edge of the lake where the distance they have to cross is not so intimidating. So I, I think they will walk down the bank of the lake until they can definitely see the other side and then cross. So hopefully they don't have to swim too far for the little ones to survive. Guys, there was a the baby wildebeest trapped on this side of the lake and it's so brave it's swimming on its own across the lake which is really remarkable bravery and let's see if it can make it across to the other side. like it's going to make it across. It might even kind of spot the crossing. little bugger. Okay guys, luckily the lake is a little bit intimidating and, and a bit wide so that they followed the bank and uh, crossing at the causeway which is good news for us. It means there will be fewer casualties today and uh, the little ones will live to die another day, I suppose. Um, so it's the best result for everyone. And, um, we're just crossing the causeway again to get to the other side and huge numbers and 
very densely packed. So we're going to just go through them and they will bunch up again and then we'll go to higher ground to, to give you a bit of a better view. But, wow, just look at that. It's amazing. Across here. 